What up gasoline fans, welcome to another video and as you can see I'm driving and that's because for the first part of this video we are heading over to MSL to do some power runs on their dyno. Now I could have gone back to Mallory Performance but time restraints mean that I couldn't actually get into Mallory Performance and that's my own time restraints, not theirs. Um, but I could get in at MSL Performance. Now the car's done around 3,000 miles since we had the stage one remap and it just seems to be getting better and better. It's pulling better. We've got some really good north 60 figures. So now it's been bedded in, I kind of just want to do a, a quick check and make sure the car is actually producing the power that we were getting uh, when we had it remapped uh, because it actually feels a bit quicker. So it'd be interesting to see what we get out there. The second part of this video, we're going to take the front bumper off and do some investigation work around the, uh, the front man in the so obviously it's got a standard intercooler at the moment, but it's, uh, I want to upgrade it, I'm going to get a custom one built. I'm not going to buy a generic one off the shelf and try and do the pipe work um, myself and then get it remapped. It just seems like a whole lot of problems waiting to happen. So I'm going to get a custom one built, especially for this car. I can then go and get it remapped, like stage two. I, uh, I can then prepare for the turbo upgrade uh, and all that good stuff that's, that's so yeah, let's get on. Okay, so we're here at MSL and we're just waiting to go on the dyno to do the power runs. Let's check the car that was safely struck down. We did a safety run. Safety run went okay and now for the first power run. So there we are, first power run done and the car's producing 247 brake at the wheels, that's 190 brake at the flywheel, that's 20 brake horsepower more than the figure we got when we did the run at Mallory Performance. Power run number two. Second run done, as you can see, we've got a small increase in power to 248 brake. Not massive, um, but pretty good. So at this point, we're on the third and final run. Let's see what the final figures are going to be. So, final run done, 246 brake horsepower at the wheels. So, 292 at the flywheel, so that's 20 brake horsepower difference in the figures. Now I don't, I'm not sure whether or not that's because the car's done bedded in or whether or not it's different to the, you know, the calibration of the, uh, of the rolling road, but hey, it's got more power, I'm happy with that, it, it kind of, you can feel that power. Um, yeah, I don't know why that is, interesting. So now, time to head back the car apart and so i'm kind of happy that we've got an increase in in brake horsepower rather than a decrease so the stage one remap was still a success and um, i don't know why there's a 20 brake horsepower difference between msl and mallory performance but hey i'm not going to complain if it's showing it's got more brake horsepower it's definitely pulling well it's definitely driving well since we've done the bedded in um, so yeah so now it's time to get on with the second part of the video spin the car around get it on axle stands and let's have a look at what we've got to play with when it comes to that front mount intercooler upgrade. Let's get on. Okay, so time to take the front bumper off, do some investigation work around the front mount intercooler. Look at what space we've got, look at what size we can get away with, take some measurements, take some pictures, get them off to RW Development in Litchfield, and then get the front mount intercooler uh, built and the, the, the pipe work designed for it, and then get it fitted to the car in a later video. So let's get on with it. So I'm going to start by taking the inner arch off because the car's on axle stands uh, it's just easier to do um, so I can get access to two bolts beyond here there's front bolts underneath kind of here and then one over there and as we did when we did the front grill we take the top bolts out uh, these bolts here and this will bring it away undo these again um, all along here there's one here, one here, uh, another bolt down here. The front bumper, in theory, once we've undone the two 
side bolts that are holding this here should just slide off, apparently. So let's get on with it. So as you can see, front bumper, top part's loose. It's two of these torques. It's a bit of a pain because it would have been better if they were sockets, but true Mercedes fashion, I like to uh, do some difficult stuff. So this side's off. Now I'm gonna do the other side and then the top. So as you can see, front bit of the bumpers on both sides, actually, are now off. So that bit's loose. I think it's just the top part and then she'll come off. So I set about undoing all the torques, screws on the top and the bolts to release the front bumper. Okay, so still some more bolts to uh, undo. There's one this side, I think that's it. I think that's the one holding that on. Then there's a plug for the uh, parking sensors and on this side, I think it might be the same. This side's a little bit tighter, so I'm not quite sure what's holding it on. I'll have a look underneath, see what I can find out. So there we are, front bumper off. Um, relatively easy to take off. Actually, what I did, um, I don't know whether you can see, I'll have a go, but I actually took the under tray off because these brackets here, um, which I couldn't find, I don't, it's a weird bracket, but the bumper sort of hangs on here, like an afterthought. Um, so yeah, so I took the under tray off so I could get to them and it's actually loads easier. I didn't actually take the arches out, didn't need to, these just pushed back. Um, and as you can see now, there's the intercooler. So I need to measure the space. And to be honest, I think I've got, quite a lot of space to play with to be honest uh they look like three inch pipes so that feed up and they sort of you can see they come up here and in like in here so i'm going to pop this off and have a look where they go so as you can see this is the intake obviously there's a turbo um to be honest where the turbo is positioned to do a turbo swap is going to be relatively easy and that is definitely gonna happen. So I just need to find out um, what hybrid turbo I can stick there uh, to replace it, slightly bigger. There's enough space in the engine bay to, to change this unit, I know that. I don't know if anyone's ever done it. Um, I'll have to look into that. Obviously, we've got the air filters here. So I imagine the intercooler pipes go into here. Oh yeah, so I can see them there, so actually, if I remove this in air intake, which is broken, thank you Mercedes, they must have done that on the last service. So let's see if I can pull this off. I don't know if I can do it with the camera. Yep, so I've got this off. Pull this pipe out of the wall the way. And there we are. There's the intercooler pipe. That goes into whatever that is. There must be another one on this side. So you see that pipe there? That's the other intercooler pipe that obviously comes off this side of the intercooler. These pipes to change, I reckon they're gonna be so easy to do. Literally, I don't reckon it's gonna be hard at all. Take this in intake pipe off. Yeah, and then you can see, you see, see there's so much space to play with with this intercooler look at that space there there's like two or three inches there's okay so cars in bits still i've got to put it back together this is what happens when you do um, modifications to your daily driver. Now, I know what size pipes I need. I know what size intercooler I can get away with in terms of the upgrade. Um, I obviously want to factor in the fact that I'm gonna upgrade the, the turbo, um, maybe the injectors, 
I don't know what I can get away with. There's very few people out there that will, um, that will, well, that, that are modifying these diesel engines. Uh, I don't know what that is because they're a fantastic engine. So yeah, get back to putting it back together so I can drive it. If you like what you see, guys, don't forget, smash that subscribe button, turn the notifications on so you know when my new videos are dropping. And I'll see you in the next video.